A declassified CIA document from the 1980s has been uncovered and it reveals a mind-bending truth. The world around you is an illusion created by your own mind, that there are alternate dimensions waiting for you to access them, and ultimately this information shows you are God. Sound crazy? I've devoted my life to studying consciousness and hidden information, and this is one of the most incredible declassified documents I've ever encountered. The shocking information within reveals a method for access other realities and a way to tap into the power of your own consciousness to transcend the limitations of time and space. This is not science fiction, this is a real document and the secrets it holds are waiting for you to uncover. Now before we continue, make sure you like and subscribe because I'll be releasing even more information about this document on my channel in the near future. The document begins by revealing the incredible fact that reality is actually an illusion constructed by your brain and the senses. It explains that the brain is capable of constructing a virtual reality through the process of perception by taking raw sensory data and organizing it into a coherent picture of the world. Think of the brain like a computer that processes programming code to construct a video game world. Well, the document explains that the brain operates in a similar way, but that this process can be transcended or hacked, allowing you to have out-of-body experiences and tap into dimensions beyond space and time. I'll be revealing exactly what this document says about how this works and by the end of this video you'll have uncovered what's described as a powerful method for breaking out of the confines of your body and the physical world and you'll have learned the ultimate truth about yourself and all existence. But first you have to know something about the gateway process. Established in 1974, the Monroe Institute is a mysterious research organization that specializes in the study of altered states of consciousness consciousness and human potential by pushing the limits of the human mind. The Monroe Institute developed a training system called the Gateway Process for altering brain frequencies to a level that induces altered states of consciousness, allowing one to access hidden layers of reality beyond the physical world. This caught the eye of the US military for its potential applications in military and intelligence operations, and in 1978, they ventured into uncharted territories evaluating the gateway process and its potential applications in the art of war. The military arranged to send its officers for training at the Monroe Institute in the art of out-of-body experiences, or OBEs. And as the years passed, the military's fascination with this only grew stronger, leading to a shadowy mission in 1983, where additional officers were sent to the Monroe Institute with the intention of unlocking the secrets of out-of-body experiences and harnessing the power for military purposes, and it was during this time, specifically on June 9, 1983, the CIA produced a then-classified document for the Department of Defense detailing the gateway process, the illusory nature of reality, other dimensions beyond space and time, and a warning of encounters with non-physical entities. Finally, this document was declassified in 2003. Now it will change the way you look at reality forever. The document begins by explaining how the mechanics of the gateway process, also known as the gateway experience, requires an understanding of biomedical models, quantum mechanics, theoretical physics, hypnosis, meditation, and references its association with the occult. And we're going to dive in and explore that process right now. You need to hear this because this will change the way you see reality forever. The document explains, fundamentally, the gateway experience is a training system designed to bring enhanced strength, focus, and coherence to the amplitude and frequency of brainwave output between the left and right hemispheres, so as to alter consciousness, moving it outside the physical sphere so as to ultimately escape even the restrictions of time and space. So what's going on here? The left and right hemispheres of the brain have very different functions. For example, when it comes to speech, the left hemisphere deals with the logical structure and rules of sentences while the right hemisphere deals with the meaning of the sentence. The two hemispheres working together, combining logical structure and meaning, is what allows us to communicate. Essentially, the gateway process uses audio signals delivered through headphones to synchronize the left and right hemispheres of the brain to alter the mind, moving your consciousness outside of physical reality. But hold on, you might be thinking, 
How can the brain move your consciousness outside of physical reality? Isn't your brain and the mind the same thing? And if your brain is physical, how can it move consciousness outside of physical reality? That doesn't make any sense. That's because the idea that this is a physical reality and that the brain produces consciousness is wrong. Let me explain. The document states, solid matter in the strict construction of the term simply does not exist. The truth is that the world around you, everything you can taste, touch, hear, smell, and feel, is a kind of illusion generated by the brain. But what about the brain itself? The brain does not generate consciousness. You are not a brain. You are an eternal system of energy, a complex of frequency. The brain is what filters, limits, and conditions you so that you can experience the physical realm. Think of your brain and body not as what you are, but like a vehicle. Think that's crazy? Not according to neurosurgeon Michael Egnor and many like him who, due to his work with the brain, has concluded there's no way that the brain can create consciousness and has abandoned materialism for idealism, which means he now believes that reality isn't physical, but mental, immaterial. Your brain and body are not what you are. It's what allows the true you to connect to physical reality. Except physical reality isn't physical either. It just seems that way when you're connected to it, just like a dream seems to be physical and real when you're in the dream. The CIA document states, the point to be made is that the entire human being, brain, consciousness, and all is like the universe which surrounds him, nothing more or less than an extraordinarily complex system of energy fields. The so-called states of matter are actually variances in the state of energy. According to this document, everything is a non-physical system of energy, including the universe, your body, and your brain. So what is the brain? Well, the brain is still a system of energy, of mind, which has the function of tuning your consciousness to perceive the physical world around you. The document continues. As psychologist Keith Floyd puts it, contrary to what everyone knows is so, it may not be the brain that produces consciousness, but rather consciousness that creates the appearance of the brain. Think of the brain not as what you are, but like a virtual reality headset that you, as an eternal being of frequencies, puts on to experience the illusion of the physical world. A VR headset blocks out the information of one world and gives you the illusion of another world. Well, the brain acts in a similar way. Well, why would your brain do this in the first place? Why would it force you to tune in and focus on only this so-called physical reality and exclude all other information? Because it evolved that way to ensure your survival. If a creature was focused on, let's say, the state of an electron spin on the other side of the universe, a predator would easily hunt it down and eat it. Aldous Huxley said, each one of us is potentially mind at large, but insofar as we are animals, our business is at all costs to survive. To make biological survival possible, mind at large has to be funneled through the reducing valve of the brain and nervous system. What comes out at the other end is a measly trickle of the kind of consciousness which will help us to stay alive on the surface of this particular planet. The idea that the brain does not create consciousness, but rather limits and focuses the mind on the so-called physical universe is known as brain filter theory. And that's exactly what this document is stating. You are not a brain. You are not physical. You are an infinite being of energy, of frequencies that's having an experience of the so-called physical world, but it's not physical either. It just seems that way. All reality is actually a kind of internal hologram. The Gateway document continues. The universe is composed of interacting energy fields, some at rest and some in motion, and it is, in and of itself, one gigantic hologram of unbelievable complexity. According to the theories of Carl Prebrom, a neuroscientist at Stanford University, and David Bohm, a physicist at the University of London, the human mind is also a hologram which attunes itself to the universal hologram. Now I need to make something very clear because I feel like I'm going to get a lot of comments about this. It's important to understand the universe is not an external hologram. It doesn't get projected out there like in sci-fi movies. Rather, it gets projected in 
internally. So whenever I or the document mentions a hologram, remember that it's not a hologram that's projected externally that you could put your hand through like in movies. It's an internal mental hologram that's solid and interacts with every physical sense, including touch. To understand that better, think about when you go to sleep and dream. You can think about your dream as an internally projected hologram. It actually is. Reality is a system of mathematical frequency patterns that are mental, they're not physical, and they create an internal hologram within itself that, when you're tuned into it via the brain, can not only be seen, but also touched, tasted, heard, and sensed in every way. According to this document, the gateway process works by hacking the brain, so to speak, by synchronizing the left and right hemispheres of the brain in such a way that it begins to lift the filtering function that keeps you tuned into the physical universe and allows you to have out-of-body experiences and experience other dimensions. According to the gateway document, this is known as clicking out, and it's done by getting the brain waves to oscillate at a frequency below a distance known as the Planck distance, which is a fundamental concept in quantum physics, named after one of its founders and Nobel Prize winner, Max Planck. This exact distance is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 35 meters. And according to the document, when the brain waves reach a frequency at this level that is nearly continuous, consciousness clicks out and enters a new world. In fact, Max Planck himself said this over 100 years ago. As a man who has devoted his whole life to the most clear-headed science, to the study of matter, I can tell you as a result of my research about atoms this much. There is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particles of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind, the mind is the matrix of all matter. According to Planck, matter doesn't exist. Everything is mind. This is a mental reality. But what does Planck mean by a conscious and intelligent mind being behind all reality? That sounds a lot like God, doesn't it? Well, things are about to get intense because while explaining the process of clicking out to another reality, the document introduces the idea of God known as the Absolute. Between the Absolute and the material universe in which we experience our physical existence are various intervening dimensions dimensions to which human consciousness in altered states of being may gain access. The absolute is conscious energy in infinity that is without boundaries. It occupies every dimension to include the time-space dimension in which we have our physical existence, but we cannot perceive it. What is the absolute? According to this document, the absolute is mental energy in infinity that is completely at rest. This energy permeates everything and is responsible for for everything. Let me explain. Since this is a reality of mathematical frequencies, of energy, it's a reality of waveforms. Now these are not physical waves, they're immaterial waves of mind. Now all waveforms, no matter how complex, can be broken down into simple, basic waves known as sinusoids. In other words, sinusoids are the building blocks of reality. They make everything up. Think about Legos, for example. You can construct amazingly complex structures with simple Legos, but you can break down those structures into the individual basic blocks that make it up. The same idea goes for something like a brick house. The house is a complex structure, but you can break it down into its individual bricks. Well, the same thing goes for waveforms. Even a wave structure as complicated as the universe itself can be broken down into individual waves known as sinusoids. They are the building blocks of existence. The gateway document is using the term the absolute to refer to the infinite energy that gives rise to the entirety of existence. In other words, the energy that is responsible for all creation. But get ready because this goes even deeper. The term the absolute was popularized in the field of philosophy in the 19th century by philosopher Georg Hegel. So what is the absolute? Well, it's God, but nothing like the kind of God you'd hear about in religion. It's us. Let me explain. According to Hegel, reality is not material. It's actually structured mind. Sound familiar? 
According to Hegel, the absolute is the ultimate reality and truth, and the entire process of evolution, the creation of the universe and history is the absolute coming to know itself through itself. In other words, the absolute projects what seems like a physical world from itself and then inserts itself into its own self-generated world as human beings. In other words, we are the absolute, experience the world that we generated. Now, the absolute isn't actually self-aware yet. You see, it doesn't do this knowingly. It's like it's asleep and dreaming and unconsciously creates a dream world and then inserts itself into its dream through human beings. And so it experiences its own world through humans, but it doesn't know that it's doing so. It gets lost in its own dream world. In other words, humans are the absolute, but don't know it. The absolute only becomes conscious when humans realize that's what they are. You are the absolute, but you don't know it. But you could. You could know it right now. You could begin to wake up to the reality of what you are. The reality that you are God experiencing its own world. And all of us are doing the same thing. The gateway process states, we have implied that this universal hologram is the finite embodiment in active energy form of the infinite consciousness of the absolute. It is the title we assigned to that vast pool of energy in a state of perfect rest over which the physical universe is layered and from whence it comes. Our consciousness, therefore, is that differentiated aspect of the universal consciousness which resides within the absolute. Human consciousness is able to separate from physical reality and interact with other intelligences in other dimensions within the universe, and that it is both eternal and destined for ultimate return to the absolute. The document then goes on to explain exactly what Hegel proposed, that is, that the absolute projects itself to explore itself and comes to self-awareness, self-conscious knowledge of itself. In order for the absolute to attain self-consciousness, the consciousness of the absolute must project a hologram of itself and then perceive it. That hologram is a mirror image of the absolute in infinity, still exists outside time and space, but is one step removed from the absolute and is the actual agent of all creation all reality. Then, on that very sentence, just as the Gateway document is explaining exactly what the Absolute is, how it comes to self-consciousness through itself, and that this is the true force of creation that religion has believed to be God, the next page is missing. Page 25 is not there. The document picks up again on page 26, but it's completely switched topics. The rest of the document is included. Every single page from page 1 to page 30 is there until the end of the document, but page 25 is gone. Right when it was beginning to reveal the true nature of the Absolute as the agent of all creation and how it's coming to self-knowledge, the true nature of God. The question is, what is on page 25. Since the report's initial declassification in 2003, countless requests under the Freedom of Information Act have been filed demanding that the CIA release page 25, but the CIA claims they never had it. Fortunately, we now have the missing page, thanks to an article by Vice about the gateway process. Vice received a note from the Monroe Institute four days after publishing an article about the Gateway Report. The Institute said they had page 25, that it had been sitting in their archives all along. Now, Vice tried to obtain the page during a phone call with the Institute's CEO, COO, and marketing division, but they refused to release it without a carefully orchestrated marketing plan. But eventually, after a major organizational change, the Monroe Institute's Director of Marketing and Communications emailed Vice with the full Gateway Report including missing page 25. The question is, what is on page 25? Was something about it too shocking to include? First, the missing page heavily implies this information could unite the world religions. It states, the absolute fits the Christian metaphysical description of the Holy Spirit. Finally, our description of the universal hologram, the Taurus of creation and evolution, is neither new nor original. Its use as the figure of the universe, of creation developing and evolution, is found in various stylized representations in virtually 
every religious system of antiquity, whether of Eastern or Western derivation, whether it's the stylized labyrinth once popular in the Hellenic world, the spiralized version of the Hebrew tree of life, or its Hindu counterpart, or the Chinese spiral through the fourfold powers, the ultimate meaning is the same. Mystics the world over, it seems, have perceived the universal hologram in the same spiral form and have incorporated that intuitive knowledge in their religious writings from antiquity to the present. Next, the missing page begins to talk about an aphorism used in mystical philosophy and esoteric circles. The aphorism, know thyself. The Gateway document states, It was axiomatic to the mystic philosophers of old that the first step in personal maturity could be expressed in the aphorism know thyself. No modern test in psychology will ever replace the depth and fullness of the perception of self which can be achieved when the mind alters its state of consciousness sufficiently to perceive the very hologram of itself which it has projected into the universe in its proper context as part of the universal hologram in a totally holistic and intuitional way. This would seem to be one of the real promises of the gateway experience from the standpoint of its ability to provide a portal through which, based on months if not years of practice, the individual may pass in his search to find self, personal effectuality, and truth in the larger sense. Now hold on, what does this mean exactly? What does know thyself have to do with anything? Well the full aphorism is, know thyself and you shall know the universe and the gods. This means that when you truly know yourself, when you know what you are, you'll know the universe and the gods. Why? Because you are the universe and the gods. You are all reality. You, we, all of us are the absolute, exploring itself through its own dream world. Interesting that information that could result in a possible unification of the world religions and human beings achieving the true knowledge of what they are and what existence is through self-knowledge was omitted. Just like in the Garden of Eden, knowledge of the self and that you can become God through this knowledge is always forbidden. While not everything in this document is entirely accurate, it's decades old after all, its major points are exactly right. Humanity is on the brink of a new beginning, a new consciousness, and once we all understand that we are the absolute experiencing ourselves in our own diversity and transformations, we'll realize that we're all in this together, and instead of fighting and attempting to destroy each other, we'll finally begin to work together to construct a brilliant new world. And that's exactly what we're here to do. Join us spreading a new consciousness and constructing a new world. Now, this is just a taste of what's in this document. The rest is incredible and I'll be exploring it in detail on my channel. So make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss it. Leave a comment, tell me what you thought and check out my other video on how quantum mechanics proves ancient knowledge. If you ever felt like you got something from my videos, support on Patreon so I can continue to create better content and you'll get access to secret videos. You can also support by hitting the join button on YouTube right below this video.